Um, the article he talks about um, how our jobs as civil engineers have a great effect on social social justice. And so, for an example, highways. When they first built the highways back in the fifties, um, they really caused neighborhoods to be split. And there's a divide that's both physical and social. Like you might have one side that is more poorer than the other side, um, just because of um, where they lay on the sides of the freeway. Um, it's suggested that to get a more diverse uh, workforce, you have to start with a more diverse student body. Um, and eventually that could lead to more empathetic approach towards engineering. Um, one thing to note that this highway situation um, and the social justice thing that's still happening in modern day. There was an expansion of a highway in LA that was halted due to a potential violation of the Civil Rights Act. So they they were concerned that the project would change the air pollution so much that it affects the surrounding poorer communities, uh, which is a very surprising thing here. Uh, so yeah, if you want to know more about this issue, please see the uh, article, I will post it in the chat right here. Next uh, are some upcoming events. Um, I will pass it on to Mackenzie to start off this. All right, let me hit the mean button. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Mackenzie Capassi. I'm the new YMF president. Um, so yeah, just, just as we were talking about YMF, we have a networking event next Thursday. Um, it is a joint event with uh, the LA section. Um, we are teaming up to do a community food drive. So um, there's doing an LA food drive and we're also doing one with a Northwest Harvest up here. So every person that we get to sign up also is a free meal. So please consider um, registering for the event. Um, not that I wanna promote anyone not showing up, but registering gives free meals. So. <laughs> please show up and register, but if you can't, a $5 donation is uh, definitely great to still give in to the community. Um, so that'll be 6 to 7.30 next week. Um, it's a joint event, so we're gonna do some fun activities together and uh, do some bingo. Um, the mentoring, mentoring program, which we're gonna touch on a little bit more later, um, those scheduled dates are gonna be from February to September of this year, and applications will be due um, July 31st. But those applications are available now to start. What did I say? Did I mess it up? <laughs> I said July. <laughs> January. Um, January 31st. Um, but uh, applications are now. I um, We did accidentally leave them off the newsletter as it was pointed out to me. But if you want more information on that, please reach out to Divya, who, you will, who is our mentorship chair, um, or myself to get some more information and it'll, um, we'll probably send out another news blast just to get that out there. Um, the, we have a K-12 event with the Washington Alliance for Better Schools. It's an after school STEM program. Um, it's a very uh, facilitated program and you kind of act as facilitators for the students. Um, so you don't need to come up with your own program and if you haven't heard of it before. And it's just a really great way. I did it last um, last session and it's it's super fun. The kids are really interactive and they provide you everything you need. So registration for that is coming up in the next week and a half um, on the 23rd. And there's a, it's only one hour a week and uh, it's for a six week program. So there's this next session coming up. Um, and there's also, oh, uh, this is for the winter session, um, but there's ones every single, every fall or every, quarter rather. Um, we have a section joint meeting with Tacoma Olympia on December 8th. Um, also with Tacoma Olympia in mind, um, if anyone is down south, there is a Tacoma Olympia happy hour tomorrow out in Gig Harbor. If you'd like more information, we can pass that along to you as well. Um, and uh, do you want me to continue with the list or? We also have uh, an EWRI meeting uh, this month on low cost material development for contaminant removal in the urban water sector. I don't know what that is, so I will be happy to find out what that is when I go attend that. Um, we also have the Lokia Awards. Um, like this last year, we'll try to do it a little bit earlier in the year. And so we're going to try to get the application deadline around January or February. So look out for that in the newsletter. 
so next I wanted to talk about the national Saudi level ASC program for mentorship. Um, if you aren't aware of it, um, they started this program about three years ago as well, um, similar to our local program. It, uh, you can get connected with a mentor or mentee simply by setting up a profile on the Collaborate website. You can then search for mentors and mentees based on different criteria, uh, based on like what they do for a living, what they want to coach or mentor you on. And then you do a meeting to see if you're a good fit for one another. Um, after that, you can agree on how long the program is for you two. You can have it a, as a three month program, a six month program or indefinite. Um, and then you just start your meetings. Uh, this program is more on your own. And so um, if you are able to do that, that's great. But if you want something that's more formalized and um, has more touch points um, and group activities, you can also do the local program, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. Um, the registration link for um, the national program is here. Let me just paste that into the chat as well. You have to be an AAC member to um, do that program as well. And if you have any questions, you can talk to Teresa Austin at theaustin.ac.org, who's the manager of the Collaborate site and the program. For our local YMF program, um, I think it's great that uh, we have this program. Uh, it's a fairly new program. It lets you connect with someone locally. Um, it also allows you to uh, have some soft skill training for personal growth. So one year we've done the strength finding using high5test.com. It also allows you to support our local civil engineering community. And you can also attend local AAC events together. So we have the program set up so you can sign up right now uh, or anytime up through January 31st. If you want to be a mentor, you can go to this link here. And if you want to be a mentee, here is a separate link for you here. Uh, I'd want to introduce Divya Shanik, who can talk a little bit more about the program. Hey. Hello, everybody. My name is Divya, and I will be leading the mentorship committee for the upcoming year. Uh, as you can see, the registration forms are all ready for the coming year for the interested mentors and mentees, and it, it has a due date of January 31st. As for now, I'm planning the program to be done virtually or, or as the mentor mentee sees fit, and there will be group events to bring everyone together for group discussions and learning. Traditional monthly meetings between the matched mentor and mentees are also part of the plan. And for any sorts of queries or suggestions, please contact me at the displayed email address. And yeah, looking forward to the increase in constructive ideas. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, and with that, we're going to move on to the formal program for the evening. Uh, I want to introduce Bethy Clark. Bethy Clark is the Washington Area Bridge Section Manager for HDR. She's been a dedicated volunteer for EC, including being the YMF president back in 2013 and 2014, and also the education outreach lead for the Seattle Section Sustainability Committee. She's been honored with the ASC Edmund Friedman Young Engineer Award for Professional Achievement. Uh, she's also been both a mentor and a protege in the WTS Mentor Match Program. Uh, at HDR, she chaired the committee that recently revamped the Washington Area Mentorship Program. Uh, especially now more than ever, it's given us uh, our, and our colleagues a uh, way to connect to one another and to grow in our careers and our lives. Um, I've known her for most of my career as an engineer. Uh, I think that she's a passionate engineer and she's also passionate about mentoring. Anyone would be lucky to have her as a mentor. Uh, Bethy, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you for that kind introduction, Dawn. Um, so let me share my screen. Um, let me know if you are able to see my PowerPoint. Yes. Great. Um, so thank you so much for inviting me to talk about mentoring. Uh, mentoring is one of my favorite topics. Um, it's meant a lot of different things to me throughout my career and my life. Um, and I wanted to kind of start out with a definition. So there's lots of definitions of, on mentoring that are available. 
um, but I found one that particularly speaks to me that I wanted to share. Um, and it's that mentoring is a relationship that takes a reciprocal and collaborative at will relationship that most often takes place between a senior and junior employee for the purpose of the mentee's growth, learning, and career development. Um, so mentoring takes place really outside of the typical um, supervisory or task lead relationships that we have in a professional setting um, that are necessary to learn and to grow and to do our jobs. Um, a person seeks out a mentor um, at their own will. And it's really to facilitate that growth, that learning and career development. And it's, it's a collaborative relationship. So meaning both the mentor and the mentee participate and benefit in the relationship. Um, and one thing that I really like about this, this definition, and it can be overlooked a lot, but it doesn't use the term protege. Um, as more junior staff in a mentoring relationship should be um, called a mentee and allowed to grow and to learn and develop on really on their own trajectory, uh, not necessarily like groomed into the path that the mentor may have taken. Um, and just to kind of cover what I wanted to talk about this evening is um, shown here. We'll start off with some of the benefits of mentoring. Um, from both a personal standpoint and a, an organizational standpoint. Um, we'll also talk about how to start a mentoring relationship. Um, I, uh, as Don mentioned, created an intentional program with a committee at HDR. So um, we'll kind of talk about some of the best practices of if you wanna start a mentoring program or a mentoring relationship. And then also um, some best practices of, on being a mentor. Um, I'm hoping to kind of use the chat throughout this and, and I've uh, recruited a few friends and colleagues and mentors to help me out and to share some of their stories to really hopefully encourage others to, um, to share and to ask questions and be engaged throughout um, the presentation. I've done a few um, Zoom presentations in COVID times and um, when it looks like there's 30 odd participants, I don't wanna be uh, talking to my screen the whole time. So please, please engage with me and um, use the chat or speak up uh, or let me know that you wanna speak and we can, we can unmute you. So um, just diving right into some of the benefits of mentoring, um, we can really see that there's a huge demand for mentoring. Um, Professional organizations offer programs, including ASCE. There's a few different programs that you can take advantage of through this society, which is wonderful. Um, and then companies frequently develop their own programs um, to offer mentoring in various ways to their staff. And really uh, the benefits are apparent and can be tracked and um, really can be shown to have a great return on investment. Um, so I was actually able to attend an ACEC mentoring training just before revamping our local program at HDR. Um, and the, tra the training provided case studies for companies that had tracked the benefits of mentoring. One of those companies was Sun. And when we look at this, the benefits are kind of shown for a company, I, I highlighted them, but the ones that are more apparent in red, I apologize for my dog. Um, so the ones that are more apparent for companies are shown here in red. And um, the, really there's kind of a war on talent. So companies are looking for ways that they can improve retention, that they can do a better job of recruiting and um, innovating. And it's, it can be shown that the money that you invest in mentoring really returns dividends to your company. So, my company, HDR, um, I heard recently, currently has um, 1,100 job openings in transportation. Um, if you haven't seen our LinkedIn vi uh, recruitment video, I'd be happy to send it to you. Send me your information in the chat. Uh, shameless plug there. Um, and I've heard different companies estimate really how much it takes to replace an employee when they leave. Um, and usually it's about one to one and a half times their salary cost. 
So measurable improvements in retention uh, quickly add up and make up the cost that you invest in mentoring as a company. Um, and then some of these other blue benefits are probably what people, um, individuals seek out when they're looking for mentoring. So career development and job satisfaction, engagement, um, inclusion in your company, but really all of these benefits are also indirect benefits um, that aren't as apparent immediately to a company, but um, certainly over time are um, huge benefits to a company as well. Um, at HDR, I chaired the creation of this intentional mentoring program that we kicked off in the fall of 2018. And um, we, we kind of revamped, um, our management challenged us to create a more intentional program with the goal of improving our retention at HDR in Washington. So um, we created this program and we started tracking um, the retention that the program had versus the retention in the greater Washington HDR. And so for the past three years, um, you can see some of the statistics here, we typically had around 110 employees in Washington participate. And um, every year the retention in um, the turnover rate in the program was about half that of the turnover rate for HDR in Washington. Um, so aside from how much that saved the company in replacing our staff, uh, just from like an, an individual employee standpoint, um, assuming that without the program, the retention rate would have been closer to the average, that's nine people in the first year that would have quit HDR, six in the second, and then eight last year. So me personally, I would potentially have 23 fewer coworkers at HDR, uh, we would have 1,123 positions open in transportation at HDR um, and all the expenses of filling those roles. Um, in addition to tracking turnover, we also tracked um, employee satisfaction with the program, with their job. And um, the best part about what I think we were able to do was to hear some of the personal stories of direct career changes, promotions, and the goals that um, the mentees were able to achieve. Um, these, these personal benefits uh, really are impactful to hear. So I wanted to invite um, Roz Bazali to share some of the benefits he's experienced from mentoring. So go ahead, Roz. Sure. Thank you, Bethy. Um, I've participated in the ASC Seattle section mentoring program in 2019. I sought it out as an opportunity to learn from someone with more experience in the industry. Um, I was fortunate enough to be paired with Tom Schnetzer, who I believe you'll hear from later. Uh, we went through a litany of professional development opportunities, and I found this really useful. The strength finders, if you haven't done those, really nice to learn about yourself um, and what how you function as a person, your stress behaviors. Um, I had a lot of industry questions. I was new to the area and connecting with someone with more years behind them. It, you can just learn a lot. They've been through things that you'll go through. So it's nice to talk about ahead of time. Um, beyond just the professional side, though, through these regular conversations, there a personal a relationship develops. You get to learn about one another, vacation adventures, uh, I was searching for a house at the time and for someone that bought here in the 90s when it wasn't much better. It was nice to bounce questions off of. So just things like that. Again, more years of experience and it's nice to learn from them. Um, I feel that we work in a really small industry and it's very, very challenging at times. So having someone that has a network and you can learn from and connect to is great on the small industry side. And getting ahead of challenges, learning, um, learning from what they've been through. When you're in the middle of something, it's always nice to have a second opinion because you can't always see out of the challenge right in front of you. So those are, that's my, my experience. And I'm, I'm hopeful that others on this call or at this meeting can benefit from it the way that I have. 
Uh, great. Thank you so much, Ross. Um, Don's putting in the chat that certainly mentoring can be for um, personal goals too. It doesn't have to be career. Um, if others have other things that they wanted to share, some of the some of the personal benefits or the benefits they've seen from being a mentee, um, let me know. We can unmute you and you can share or you can type it in the chat. Um, I know one of the things that a lot of people focus on in mentoring is is work life balance. So you know, as individuals, we are more than just our career, and uh, we should be encouraged to be more than that. So certainly, Don, the professional and personal goals can uh, mentoring can help with those. So I'm not seeing anything come through the chat. Thanks again, Ross. Um, so then. Um, I wanted to talk about how you start a mentoring relationship and kind of where to begin. Um, if you're looking to find a mentor, there are a lot of options out there. Um, mentoring relationships can start as, as easily as just asking a person you admire for advice or more formally to be a mentor to you. Um, and the relationship can start that way. Um, mentors, can seek out a mentee, uh, but more often it's the other way around. Um, you also might seek out a person for their, either their technical abilities or um, the career achievements that they've been able to, um, maybe a, a role or some kind of prof professional achievement. Uh, perhaps it's a position in, in your company that you admire. Um, for me, I think that the mentors that have really been the most impactful in my life. Um, actually, Tom, Tom Schnetzer was one of my mentors as well. So Ross and I have that in common. Um, but your personality and your rapport with between the mentor and mentee can be equally as important when you're when you're selecting that person in addition to their abilities and um, their background. So other questions you might want to kind of ask when you're looking for a, a mentee is can or mentor can I be vulnerable with this person and can I ask the type of questions that'll really allow me to grow will this person push me um one of my mentors at HDR he's always asking me um Rob Berman so what are you going to do about it um and then he, it's not only that he encourages me to take action but then he also checks back on my progress to make sure that, um, that I'm following up and that he holds me accountable. Um, I'm, I'm really thrilled that uh, Ross also brought up strength finders. Um, I am a relater and an includer and a learner. So one of the types of mentoring that has um, really worked for me in my career is group mentoring. Um, so a friend of mine kind of calls this her board of directors. Um, this can be just any group of people um, with similar or varying levels of experience that get together to help each other learn, grow, develop, ask questions. Um, for me, this is frequently centered around happy hour, which is another bonus. And um, Amanda Schellenberger has also served as one of my board of directors for years now. Um, so I would like to invite her to share a little bit about the types of mentoring relationships that she's seen. Thanks, Bethy. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so my name is Amanda Schellenberger. Uh, I'm a principal environmental engineer uh, at Anchor QEA um, in our Seattle office. And um, I've participated in, uh, as Bethy said, um, mentoring is definitely a, a passion on me, both in terms of appreciating the benefits of being a mentee. Um, and also, um, as I've grown in my career, I'm definitely transitioning more to the mentor side of things. And I, I also participated as a mentor to um, a recently graduated UW student this year as part of the ASC program. So that was fun too. Um, one of the things I wanted to chat about was a little bit of, you know, uh, the difference between informal mentoring and formal mentoring. Um, and I think both types of mentoring have their advantages. So informal man, uh, mentoring is something that sort of 
happens naturally when you're part of a team um, you know, you're already working with someone and you're like, gosh, I look up to you and you, you know, you're learning from them. It feels probably natural and it happens kind of based on mutual interest. Um, on the other side of things, formal mentoring is more of a great opportunity to kind of get to know someone, to learn something that you wouldn't necessarily do as part of your everyday job you know you're not necessarily working with them maybe they're still part of your company but they're in a different department or a different office or maybe they're you know um a, a, an asc member that doesn't work at your company um and i've appreciated formal mentoring in terms of kind of having that formal program having the accountability and those types of things which is helpful but as as bethy said you know some of the challenges of formal mentoring is you got to step outside of your comfort zone. You're meeting new people, um, and you know you. In order for it to really work, there should be some sort of you know connection, and that takes that takes some time. So, I guess I would say just as you think about mentoring and seeking those mentoring relationships, I've personally benefited from from both types. And um, by the way, Bethy, I I really we it's been way too long. Um, our mentoring our our uh, what did you call them board happy hours? It's COVID has uh, put the, put a put a break on those, but we need those. Um, but um, I guess the 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 uh, common element of all of these different relationships is you get out of it what you put into it. So you know if you're gonna take the time to you know. Um, you know, be a mentor or a mentee, like commit to it and really try to, um, you know, put something into it. The, the last thing I would say is um, one thing that sort of bridges the gap between informal mentoring and formal mentoring is, you know, don't be afraid to just tell someone, you know, hey, I'm thankful for your mentorship or gosh, I really think of you as a mentor. Um, it's funny, like, say, like saying the words out loud sort of makes it official and it's obviously a huge compliment to tell someone that. So maybe one action item to take from this call is think of someone that maybe is already acting as a as an informal mentor to you and reach out and 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 thank them for it. I love that. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah, no problem. And yes, it has been way too long. I know. <laughs> maybe before the end of the year. We'll see. <laughs> um, so if you're really trying to find that formal mentorship, um, looking for a program like your company provides or a, a professional organization provides can be a really great option. Um, frequently they have events and, and different ways to engage. Um, so I know Don, has, Don Nguyen has also um, participated in a number of organizations and helped start the local ASCE program here as well. So I'd like to invite Don to share a little bit about the different types of mentoring programs that are available. Great, thanks, Bethy. Um, also note that we have a question in the chat for you for after my part. Oh, um, right, so thank besides you. the uh, programs that ASCE provides, I, I really hope that you can go to those. Uh, but there are other options you can go to as well. So a few years ago, there was a UW College of Engineering mentor program where they paired working professionals with students. Um, and that program was more focused on career attainment and getting your first job. So all, a lot of the meetings were more about resume uh, re revisions and interview prep. Um, that program is somewhat defunct now. So if you still wanna do something like that, I know the YNF does plenty of resume re review nights for uh, SU and UW. So you can join that as either a reviewer or a student. Um, I mean, I think that one is more of a one, one and done event. And so you don't necessarily get the um, long-term engagement that you would with a more formal program, but I think at least you'll have uh, that as an option. Uh, you might have your own internal mentoring program that your company provides. And if you don't have one at the moment, maybe that's something that you can start up um, after you've gained all the knowledge from this presentation. Uh, you can also volunteer your time with uh, K through 12 outreach programs to be a mentor to students. Uh, we talked about it earlier that the uh, Washington Alliance for Better Schools, WABS, uh, they have a program. The program is about um, teaching kids about emergency aid drop packages that they use. 
um, in areas impacted by natural disaster. So you'll be there to help facilitate that event, but you'll also be there to really give them exposure to the civil engineering industry and to really like be a mentor to them. Um, the YMF also partners a lot with the ACE mentorship program, which is um, architecture, construction, and engineering. That allows high school students to connect with uh, these industries as well. You can also get involved in other organizations like the Scouts. Um, I think just being there for others and uh, providing your exp experience, expertise, that's all that really matters. It doesn't really have to be a formal program. Um, just choose the programs that are right for you um, and know that you don't necessarily have to do just one program. You do multiple if you wanted to. Um, I highly encourage you to uh, do the YMF mentorship program. Uh, and the time commitment is as little as a, an hour a month. So it's not, not a hard lift, I would say. Um, back to you, Bethy. Great, thanks, Don. Yeah, it's so important to recognize that we're all, we all have different levels of experience and you know, we can easily mentor a, a young person or um, even a leader in our own company who doesn't quite know um, the technology or um, the terms or the culture. Um, we all have something to share. So finding that right fit, um, I think there's lots and lots of options out there to be both a mentor or a mentee. Um, so Nick, uh, thank you for the question. Um, keeping a mentorship relationship um, can be hard. And I kind of talked about how important that personal connection is that you really feel like you can talk to that person and ask questions. Um, so I'd say a couple things. Um, the way that we formatted our mentorship program at HDR was to really emphasize um, getting to know you events, um, things like strength finders or people styles or um, events that are focused around um, learning something new about yourself. And you, when you do that together with your mentor and met or mentee really early on in the relationship or the program, um, it helps those two people form that connection. Um, so we've, we've set up our mentorship a schedule to include something like that really early on in um, the program to try to help facilitate um, really forming a connection and um, avoid two people being too too formal or not really getting to know each other because frequently you know in a mentoring relationship especially in a program like ASCE you might be paired with someone you've never met before and it um, um, as as extroverted as all of us engineers are Sometimes it can be hard um, to really open up and form a relationship. So the other thing that I would say too is that um, sometimes it, it isn't a good fit. And if, if you're meeting someone from for the first time or trying to force fit a relationship with a mentor, um, you, can't, you can't ask to be repaired or look for a different avenue for mentorship. Um, there's also lots of materials available um, if you're participating in a formal mentoring program that um, have some table topics or some goal setting exercises or different ways that um, can help you come to a meeting with topics that you can talk about um, so, so that you're not kind of sitting there awkwardly and can help you really start that relationship. Um, I don't know if, uh, any others on the call want to kind of weigh in on um, Nick's question, um, but hopefully that kind of helps. Uh, it can be can be challenging. Okay, so um, I also just wanted to kind of explain a little bit more about how we structured our program. At HDR. So if you're thinking about starting a program for a professional organization or with your company, um, some of the best practices and some of the really things that I think helped our program be so successful um, were that we had management participation and support from the very beginning. Um, this was something that they really wanted to see happen. They saw the benefit and they wanted to be active participants. So they encouraged some of their junior staff to sign up to be mentees. 
They encourage their senior staff to take the time to be mentors. They themselves, our senior leadership, all served as mentors in the program um, and provided those their names to potential mentees to know that they were supporting it and they, they could be selected to be a, a potential mentee to their senior leadership. And then they also provided financial support. And one of the resounding things that I saw in the ACEC mentoring program is that companies frequently support their employees' time for mentoring. Um, I kind of talked about how much the return in, on investment there is and can be shown for mentoring. Um, and really paying someone overhead for an hour to talk to junior staff is, is so beneficial to both parties that it's a really small price to pay. So financially supporting um, our program was really key to the success as well. And then um, we set a, a dedicated schedule that we followed every year so that employees knew when they can expect to sign up and it followed the school year. We kicked off in the fall and then we had a set end time so that um, we kept things fresh and we could repeat it. And then um, I talked a little bit about how we structured the mentoring program to kind of have the initial get to know you phases right at the beginning. But we had a format um, of types of events that we had at key times throughout the program year to really facilitate um, getting to know you, setting goals, um, and celebrating accomplishments at key milestones throughout the program. And um, that, that kind of replicatable formula um, has kept us on track every year because um, our committee was all made up of people that have regular day, day jobs and it's very easy to miss deadlines and let things slip. But when we had that um, formwork created, we're, it, was, it was easier for us to stay on track. And then we've, we've really sought out feedback and tried to incorporate new ideas and um, improve the program year after year so that we continue to get a lot of people participating and benefiting from mentoring. Um, and then as I talked about kind of with Nick, I think it's important to allow people the opportunity to say, this isn't what I was looking for. Um, you know, we provided kind of a, a get to know you quiz to figure out what the right fit for the mentee was and tried to pair them with the person that we thought that was gonna help them grow. But sometimes it really just is not a good fit. And um, from the mentee side and from the mentor side, we allowed people to be repaired if that was necessary and still um, participate in the program. And then um, we have a mentoring packet. Um, some of the pairs use this and it helps them with goal settings and topics to bring to the to the one-on-one -on -one meetings. And, some of them don't, you know, um, mentoring can be formal or informal, but we found that just having those resources um, really helped some of the pairs keep things going. Um, we also have a really strong committee. So we have people that represent all of our business groups. They know the staff really well and they're dedicated to mentoring. Um, so that really helps, I think, in the pairing process and making sure that our staff are really benefiting and that this, the program is speaking to where our culture is and where our staff is um, at the time. So we've had, um, we've had themes every year that really um, speak to what we're going through. And um, retention was the first year. Um, seizing opportunities was last year. Um, I think we were all kind of sick of the, the COVID funk and just wanted to move on to bigger, better things. And then this year's um, program is um, theme is resiliency. Um, so just having the committee that knows the staff and can keep things fresh. Um, and then one other thing that we do right, right at the beginning of the program is to have a training where our mentors come in and we have a training for our mentors specifically and a separate training for our mentees so that we set expectations and let people know kind of um, how things are gonna go and talk about some best practices and collaborate with each other, just the mentors and the mentees. 
Um, so thank you, Ross. I see that you've shared some advice for Nick. Um, not knowing what you don't know is one of the biggest challenges. Yeah, asking questions is just so important. Um, and Don, yes, talking about your career path to spark ideas, right. Um, so that is kind of what I've learned about and what I wanna just share about if you're trying to start your own program, um, you can definitely reach out to me and see if you have um, other questions that you wanted to talk about if you're trying to start something new. Um, but then also just, I wanted to talk about being a mentor. And um, it's so great that Amanda really called you all to share with someone that they are your men that they serve as a mentor to you because um as a leader as an expert um as a person in the industry um i think all of us should recognize that someone does look up to us and and considers us a mentor so and you're when you're going about your um day-to-day lives and your your profession just realize that someone probably is looking to you and your leadership and um that really can affect your actions um and being a mentor and knowing that you're mentoring someone else um, is really powerful and then if if you have the opportunity to be a formal mentor to someone um you know create a reciprocal relationship um a trusting friendship where they your mentee feels like they can ask questions they can be vulnerable and that they have something to offer that you that the mentor is also learning and growing um just from the relationship um so sharing your experiences is a great way to kind of reflect on what you've what you've gone through in your career and and potentially help someone else um, in what they're currently going through. And um, I've found that when I'm when I'm reflecting on different times in my career with younger staff, um, that also really triggers my um, what might what might be going on with my staff currently. Um, so if I if I hear that a, ment a mentee is is kind of struggling as a new parent and um, trying to balance uh, their newfound family responsibilities with their work responsibilities. Um, you know, I've been there. And it also then just reminds me to be cognizant of that with my own staff and um, remind me to know like kind of where they're coming from. So reflecting on your career can be really powerful for, for both the mentee and for, for you and your team. Um, and then holding your mentee accountable, um, I think is one of the biggest things that you can do. So not just helping them set their career, their goals or their, their career or their professional goals, but then also um, making sure that you check back in and, and make sure that they know that you want them to succeed and to achieve those goals and um, make sure that you can find ways to help them achieve them along the way. So holding them accountable, um, setting goals. And then sometimes um, mentees can, can miss some of their own abilities and um, their own potential. So a, a mentor is a really great person to help them see what they can do and encourage them to take that next step. Um, and one, one way that um, you can format your one-on-ones with your mentee and mentor is um, they don't have to be one-on-ones. You can help them grow their network and um, not one person is probably going to have all of the abilities or the um, experience that a mentor mentee might be looking for. So introducing them to some of the people that you know who might be able to help them with a particular thing that they're struggling with or help, hoping to learn or grow in is expanding their network and and letting them um, in on some of the experts that you've relied on. Um, and then, yeah, just reflecting on your own 
um, on your own career path and really sharing um, as much as you can, um, listening and being there for your mentee. And then um, hopefully uh, Tom was able to join. Um, so Tom Schnetzer was a mentor that I had through WTS um, early in my career. And he's been an amazing mentor to a lot of people um, that I know. So I wanted to have him and I, he had, is Tom on? Yeah, look actually, Tom. Oh, good, Tom is here. So Tom, I wanted you to kind of share some of your tips and tricks for, um, for being a great mentor, not just, you know, you're obviously awesome luck to be able to get such men great mentees as Ross and I, but how do you, how do you make your relationship so successful? I think we can't hear you. Let me see if. There, there is that better? Okay. Yes. Um, you know, for me, I mean, just really starting the mentoring relationship, I think um, right out of the gate, you know, one thing I'd recommend for, for mentors and for the protégés is to really just make sure you get off to a strong start. Um, you know, I think it's important to just set that communication pr protocol right at the first meeting as far as how often you want to meet and the best time to meet and location, um, as well as just some of the, um, the way you want to communicate. You know, some people like email better or phone or text. And um, so I think it's important just to kind of set those guidelines and just set that foundation for how you're going to work together. And then in the first meeting for me, it's always important to really just establish an agenda for the year. Um, that's really driven by the, by the protege. Um, doing that will, will give you some direction and roadmap for the topics you want to do as well as what's the, what's the bigger priority. Um, and you can work with the, you know, as I said, the protege should, should drive that, but doing that, I think, um, just gives you a, a good base to have a good productive meetings going forward. You know, what I find is I've typically done that. And then over time, it, um, it doesn't necessarily, in fact, you almost never completely follow it. Other things pop up, but it, you know, it, it, it is just a good catalyst there. Um, and then just take different options there, you know, everybody works a little differently. So it can be reading something in common, um, working on specific soft skills like negotiating or presenting. Um, as Betsy said, helping someone network. Um, I know for me, we're working with, um, you know, with my protégés, I'm a big fan of strength finders as well. And, and always look to that if um, protégés open to it as you know, working that in pretty early into the, um, into our um, relationship. Um, as far as the year, year goes, um, the year goes on or however long the relationship may last. Um, I've had some, like Bethy said, she and I continue to meet even now. Um, you know, I think it's really important when, when you're having these discussions as a mentor, you just want to be present, you know, actively listen, get a lot of the distractions out of the way and really focus on, on the discussion itself. Um, with it, um, let the protege do most of the talking. I mean, you're really there to, um, you know, to ask those thought provoking questions and discuss the pluses and minuses of different options rather than really directing. Um, you know, I think it's important to um, <clears throat> let the protege kind of learn by coming up with a lot of the answers themselves. Um, what's right for me may not be right for somebody else. And um, honestly, as, as you know, I'm not always right. A lot of times my approach won't work for something. So I think it's, I think it's important to, um, you know, to let the protege work their own way and really use, use the mentor as a sounding board. Um, I found it's great for me. I learned a lot of different, um, different viewpoints and approaches. So a lot of times I think I learn as much as the, the protege does whenever we're meeting together. Um, I think it's also really important just to be encouraging, you know, push, push your protege to stretch himself, you know, be there to support them. But um, you do want, you know, I think push it. I think it's important for all of us to stretch ourselves and be, um, be a little uncomfortable with where we're heading. You know, that's, that's how we learn and grow. And then be vulnerable. Um, you know, share your own fears, you know, the failures you've had, the lessons learned. Um, it's always easier to learn from somebody else's mistakes than to make them yourself. Um, you know, so, so just be open and vulnerable in having those types of discussions. Um, I think it's important too, um, confidentiality is a big deal. You know, if you're going to have these, you know, these vulnerable discussions, things that may be potentially embarrassing of some of the mistakes you've made in the past, I think it's really important to, to really 
you're going to have those, keep it confidential just so you build that trusted relationship. I think that goes both ways um, within the pair, both the protege and the mentor really keeping their discussions um, confidential that they're having. Um, you know, and then finally, I think it's important to really focus on what the purpose of the mentoring relationship is. You know, you're, you should really be there to offer guidance and support without any outside agenda. Um, you know, as a mentor, I always stay away from trying to trying to recruit or come in with, with some sort of outside agenda that, um, to me, that's breaking the trust a little bit and, and um, isn't really the intent of, of what we're trying to accomplish here in these relationships. Um, you know, I think with all those, um, yeah, it, just be natural with it. You know, it's, you know, you can get into some pretty deep topics on both, you know, on both sides. And I think, um, you know, I think if you just follow those, you know, those basic principles around, you know, focusing on the relationship, being vulnerable, um, keeping things confident, um, and just really being present and, and being there to help, um, really turns it into something that, uh, that can really help us grow. And it's always fun to see that and then see, you know, see somebody you've mentored step in and start mentoring others and, and just watch it grow from there. So, yeah, that'd be my big advice. A lot, a lot in there I know. But. Definitely. Thanks, Tom. And just paying it back and paying it forward is such a rewarding part of mentoring. And it's um, just constantly growing throughout your career. Um, so that kind of concludes the formal part of the presentation. Um, Thank you so much for inviting me to talk about mentoring. It's one of my favorite topics. And um, thank you for my um, special guests for sharing some of their experiencing their experiences. Um, so I think at this point, um, it doesn't look like we have any additional um, questions or comments in the chat. So um, I think we'll probably, I'll turn it back over to Don. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Kathy. There you go. Should we on again? Um, I, first, I wanted to uh, thank Bethy for the great presentation and also for being a great mentor to me. And as I went my way through ASE and now working at HDR, I also want to thank. Bethy and Tom for volunteering me to create the local Seattle YMF mentorship program a couple of years ago. Um, uh, thank you also to the people that helped run this event. So uh, we have Ross and Spencer, our program chairs, and Ashraf and Shane, our house, house, hospitality chairs, and the help from the YMF, Mackenzie, Divya, and Lydia. Um, on the screen, you can see some reminders of events that we have coming up. And also, if you want to join the local mentorship program, these are the links again. Um, I will paste it again in the chat so that you have it. <clears throat> the chat is here. Um, up next, we will have our breakout rooms. So if you want to um, ask Bethy a question directly, you can go to chat room. Uh, a, if you want to talk to us about the local AAC mentorship program, you can go to the next room. If you want to talk about the society level AAC mentorship program, you can talk to me in the next room after that. Um, if you just want to network and hang out, we have a few different rooms for that. We have one for um, playing games. If you want to play Scriblio, which is a Pictionary type game, you can go to this room with Mackenzie. If you just want to drink together, there's this room. And if you just want to meet new people, there's this last room. Um, we're going to allow you to move into your own rooms yourself. And so if you have any trouble getting into a room, just let us know, it's kept in the chat, and we can uh, move you ourselves. And also feel free to jump around the rooms um, after you uh, go to the rooms. Um, it's the same way that you would do it if you were to join. Uh, let's see, are the rooms ready to go? Okay. Oh, so let me paste in the chat what the rooms are for again, and so you can choose what rooms you want. So A is chatting with the presenter. B is questions. 
with the local AC membership. C is society. Okay. Yeah, rooms are ready. Now you're free to choose. I don't think we see anything, or I don't see anything on my screen to move. Maybe I have pressed them. Let me see. Oh. So if you put the bottom of your screen, it might be hidden under the um, ellipses under more, but there's a button for breakout rooms. Not for us. No. Have they been launched? Okay, I can see from here, but... Uh... Uh, can you close the rooms, Ashraf, and we'll, we'll uh, resend it? Okay, close everything. <clears throat> 